Warning, this video is about to get nerdy and also be subjective. The two things that make for some delicious discussion online. Hello, 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 everybody. I am Jmalls of Jmalls Gaming. And let's talk about Final Fantasy XIV job design. Huh? It has been an absolute hot topic in the scene right now. Now, with the new expansion Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail coming up really soon, I have been really optimistic about the state of the game going into Dawn Trail and beyond. However, one of the biggest points I see in response to Dawn Trail is the state of job design and the oversimplification of job design over the last couple of years in Final Fantasy XIV. And this is a sentiment that I see all the time and is one that I largely agree with. But I want to come at this from my own perspective. I'm not a high-end raider. I'm not someone who passes. I'm not someone who does any of that. And I even noticed the issues that Final Fantasy XIV has had in this regard, and I want to talk about my perspective here. You see, Final Fantasy XIV is a video game. I know, shocker, right? Absolutely unexpected there. But it's a video game. The purpose is to be fun and or engaging. And when it comes to job design, I think the oversimplification has run aground on this issue. So let's talk about it. I think before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I should probably, you know, have us look at the article I'm talking about. You see, Yoshi P did an article or an interview with Games Radar. Link in the description down below. And the headline of this one says, Final Fantasy XIV's Yoshi P says, Dawn Trail will finally return, quote, more individuality, end quote, to the MMO's jobs, admitting we're not in a good situation for that, in quotations, after years of oversimplification. Now, if you are like me, you read this and thought that is a positive thing. And I think expectations need to be tempered a little bit, but I think overall, this is saying the right thing. So let's delve into this a little bit further. As the Final Fantasy XIV community expresses concerns about the oversimplification of jobs, director Yoshi P reveals that he's aware, and that yes, Dawn Shell's future updates will remedy this. We are moving the timeline up further than we thought it'd be, because at that one live stream he kind of hinted or just said it would be 8.0. Now it sounds as if it's going to be about 7.2 and beyond, we'll get to that later on. But he brings up the example of Kaiten from Samurai. Now, you may be asking, well, Jamals, what's Kaiten from Samurai? To my knowledge, it's been a while. I think I looked this up a couple days ago as well. Kaiten was an ability that enhanced the potency or the effectiveness of the ability you were about to do next. Like the next button you press after Kaiten, it would do even more more damage, right? It was a big debate, apparently. I liked the thing, because I thought it fit Samurai well and was a nice bit of flair for Samurai, but they did eventually call it. And this is an example people use for the oversimplification of jobs here that you can see. Revealed that larger the community is indeed afraid of the oversimplification of jobs based on a Reddit poll. Now we've had changes made to the Astrologian's card system and sex system, to DPS class ability nerfs. Some fans remark that they don't think it's possible for them to make jobs any simpler than they are. And then Yoshi P says he's aware of this sentiment, and as is the rest of the Final Fantasy XIV team. He promises that jobs like Samurai won't be simplified any further, explaining that he's still really torn about job tweaks like the removal of Kaiten. At the time of the skills removal, Yoshi P said that there were more people requesting Kaiten to be removed than were happy with it. This is the funny little thing we need to come to realize when it comes to job design, especially in MMORPGs, is that the community can often be really torn. And especially if you are familiar with World of Warcraft and the history of that game, one of the most cited reasons people have given Blizzard in regards to why they have quit that game was that, well, the jobs, well, the classes in that game kept changing constantly because they kept doing class changes like every patch. And for the most part, people just want something they find fun and they want it to stay like that. And if you mess with it too much, it's really off-putting for them. So I understand the predicament they're in right now. Do you try and keep things as they are, or simplify it to try and appeal to a more broader audience, or do you not do that? And he even talks about how there's no answer in situations like this, as there are always going to be some people who prefer more difficult mechanics, and then others who prefer simple mechanics. And he's not wrong, and I agree with the 
article here. He's not wrong. The removal of skills like Kaiten always sparks varying responses, with many missing an ability but others disagreeing. This doesn't mean Square Enix doesn't take overwhelming negative feedback on board, though. Yoshi P states that right now he's also concerned about the simplicity of jobs, just as the majority of fans are. And this is the thing, in my opinion. Because you kind of have three camps in regards to whenever you make changes for a job here. You have the people who want more complex or more in-depth job design. You have people who want far more simple job design. And then you have who, in my opinion, are the vast majority, people who just don't care. Now, in my opinion, that majority that is kind of... I just kind of assume that they're the majority because they're going to be more casual. They're not going to be particularly caring about min-max and they just want things to look pretty and to be able to do the content that they want to do. Those people who don't care, we don't have to care about their opinion because they don't care about this debate anyways, right? Because they're enjoying the parts of the game they want to enjoy and that's entirely fine, that's your prerogative. However, I don't think that when it comes to the debate about whether or not to make jobs more simple and in-depth or more complicated, that that entire sect of the player base should be viewed as opinions that should be relevant to this, right? That just makes sense. They're not the target audience for this. And I think adding more depth and complexity are cool in terms of theory, but what I want is this. Yoshi P then reveals that the team will remedy this as Dawn Trail and its future updates roll out, working towards a more fulfilling playing experience. We will look to the jobs and we will focus on providing more individuality in the jobs in patch 7.2 and beyond. That to me is the real kisser here. That is the thing to me that tells me, okay, they know what they're doing here. To me, it's not about making a job complex or in depth for the sake of it being in depth and complicated. What I want out of a job is individuality and something cool about it. Return to Final Fantasy XIV. One of the biggest examples of job identity that has been removed and culled from the game, in my opinion, is on Dark Knight and this button right here called Abyssal Drain. It's a basic 60 second ability where you cast it out, do some AoE, you restore your MP, but also your HP. Now, JMOLs, what is it about Abyssal Drain? Who remembers pre Shadowbringers when this ability was spammable with Dark Arts? Dark Arts being kind of like Kaiten for Dark Knights. It was awesome. And this was something that you never really used, to my knowledge, at the high end, right? But if you were like me and you were running dungeons and getting used to tanking, having Abyssal Drain on Dark Knight was so cool. Because one, the ability looks freaking pissa. Look at this thing. Boom! It just throws out this giant ball of light with these shadowy needle-like things extending outwards from the core. It looks awesome. It feels so good, especially when you're in a massive AoE situation. You hear that sound effect of the game tallying up all the hits. You're getting all that HP back. It felt great. I loved it. I loved it so much, dude. But they got rid of it. Now, was it matter? I couldn't tell you I wasn't playing high-end back then. I was really new to the game. I joined in Stormblood. But I loved Dark Knight so much, and I didn't mind tanking because of Abyssal Drain. It was super cool. And this, in my opinion, is one of the aspects to Final Fantasy XIV that has slowly been eroded over the last couple of years. Not entirely, mind you, but it's slowly eroded. It's a lesser version of itself before, and that is job identity. That was a feeling I only ever really got out of Dark Knight because of Abyssal Drain, because it was the aesthetic I cared about, and it was an interesting and fun mechanic. Other classes had abilities to wow you to heal after hitting, right? But there was something sick about hitting a Dark Arts into an Abyssal Drain. I don't even know if it worked. It just felt good to me. But it just felt good seeing my HP go back up because I played a Blood Death Knight in World of Warcraft. It was fun. It was interesting. It was flavor. It was individuality for the Dark Knight. Now, let's go over to the Blackest Knight. It creates a barrier around yourself or a target party member that absorbs damage totaling 25% of your maximum HP. And it gives you Dark Arts, not the old one, when barrier is completely absorbed. And the Dark Arts effect consumes Dark Arts instead of MP to execute Edge of Shadow or Flood of Shadow to big damage OG CDs. That's cool, right? Sounds really cool. Now, if you talk about high end, this is really problematic. But when it was introduced in Shadowbringers, I thought, wow, 
this is really cool because I have a defensive I can work around, I can plan around, and I feel rewarded from a mechanical perspective when I use this accordingly. When I know I'm about to get hit for a big truckload of damage like a tank buster, I can pop the Blackest Knight, absorb a really good chunk of that, and then I'm rewarded for using that appropriately with a free cast of one of my OG CDs. Is it problematic on the high end? Yes, and those people can tell you to high hell about the issues that the Blackest Knight has. But I thought it was a cool bit of individuality and identity for the Dark Knight. But I no longer like the ability, and why is that? Well, it's a very, very, very simple reason. That is because, my dear viewer, they basically gave that idea to every other tank in the game. Yeah, my hotbars are all messed up because I changed PCs and I forgot to back up my uh, UI, so it's a cluster crap. Uh, you have stuff like bloodletting. It's not Super Bowl I can tell you that right now. Heart of Corundum on Gunbreaker, and then, yeah, Holy Sheltron. They all have some version of this big defensive cooldown that you can cast semi-regularly, but it doesn't have the drawbacks like the Blackest Knight, because Blackest Knight requires MP, and it also requires you to then fulfill a condition to reap the benefit. So it's now just a worse version of something that the other jobs just have a better version of, so it feels bad in my opinion, and it also loses that unique feeling of identity that it once had. So that is one aspect to this whole debate that I just want to put out there. I like having abilities, even if you don't use them on the high end, you can still find an interesting way to utilize them, or just feel really good. Preach Gaming calls these things called like moments of glory, where it's your class or job's ability, or just series of abilities, or a unique situation that you can put yourself in, or utilize because of the job class you, class you are playing, that makes you feel really good. For me, I really like Dragoon. It's one of my favorite jobs in all of Final Fantasy XIV, but it also brings to the table one of my biggest points of critique when it comes to job design. And that is big cooldowns, a big windows, not giving you a mechanical feedback that feels rewarding enough. One of the reasons I've played Reaper a lot is because, well, in Shroud, changes the way you hit your buttons. It changes the actual inputs of what you do, because this ability, Reaper as a job, is really simple. But if I'm going into in Shroud, yeah, in fact, let's do it right here. Let me just showcase what I'm talking about. I can go into in Shroud. Now, pay attention to the pace of the job before here. You probably know exactly what I'm already about to talk about. But right now, I'm having a very simple flow when it comes to Reaper. Nothing too out of the ordinary, nothing too extra or special special or in-depth when it comes to Reaper, is kind of what you expect from it. However, in a second, I'm about to hit an ability called Enshroud. Enshroud is a big form. It allows me to now change the pace of the game, I'm changing the buttons I'm hitting, my rotation changes, and I can feel the fact that I hit Enshroud. It's extremely simple, right? Because in that window, I'm just kind of spamming this button, then this button, then my OGCD, then this button, then this button, OGCD, and then Communio. This will be augmented in Dawn Trail. However, realistically, that is really simple, right? It's very simple. But it feels good to pull off. And that, to me, is the most important part of it. It feels good to pull off. It may be simple, but it's fun. And at the end of the day, it should be fun. It should feel good. I like it when my job has a big window where I'm going to do a lot of damage, but it makes my playstyle feel different. I don't want to just see the numbers get bigger. I want to see, oh, I'm actively playing different now. I can feel this power boost. When it comes to Dragoon, though, I love Dragoon because I love the flow of the combat. I love the pace to it. It's really good. It's really fun, in my opinion. I like going between the various combos and interweaving them. I'm someone who was a bit trepidatious when it came to them proposing when they announced that they were going to completely remake Dragoon essentially with 7.0 I was a bit worried about that because I really enjoyed what was there about Dragoon but my biggest worry my biggest concern with Dragoon was this when I go into life of the dragon my big window for Dragoon because realistically what does it devolve to I get, like, a couple extra GCDs that I can hit every now and then, but for the meat and potatoes of this window, am I feeling that difference all that much? Well, not really, right? Because mostly, 
I'm just glowing red, and I'm hitting the same abilities. Not much is actually changing about my playstyle here. And that, to me, was the biggest concern I had with Dragoon, and something I would really hope that they would remedy, and maybe they will eventually. Because I love the overall flow and pace of Dragoon, but I wish Life of the Dragon had a bit more meat on its shoulders, right? Because to me, it's really one-dimensional, it's really simple, because you're just adding abilities that do a bunch of damage, but you're not really mixing up my playstyle. It's not making me feel different when I'm in Life of the Dragon. I just have to hit a couple extra, an OGCD. Yeah, that's like all I gotta do, really. I just gotta weave in a couple extra ones. It's cool when I'm pressing them. That's kind of it, and it's not on the level of, say, in Shroud. I'm not saying I want every job like Dragoon to have in Shroud, but I'm just saying I like that design where I have this big burst window and then I'm playing different. I'm pressing different buttons or I'm doing different things. I really enjoy that aspect to Reaper. And seemingly, that's what I'm going to get out of uh, Viper in Dawn Trail as well. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about what I want to see out of job design going into the future. I want that individuality. When I'm hitting my buttons, I want to feel those power boosts. I want to feel mechanical feedback or response from the game for playing the game correctly. Going into Enshroud on Reaper does this for me. Dragoon, I really enjoy the pace and flow of it. I don't want Enshroud on Dragoon. I want Eye of the I want Life of the Dragon to at least make me feel really different other than a few OG CDs. That's what I'm talking about. I'm really flexible on this issue and the implementation, but I think Final Fantasy XIV would really behoove itself and benefit from adding more spice of life into the gameplay. Because we can talk about balancing till the cows come home every day of the week. In my opinion, balancing is all well and good, and is important, do not get me wrong on this, but making sure that the jobs all play in an interesting and fun way and aren't overly simplified and cold to the point where they all are homogenous and really simple and one-dimensional is extremely important and in my opinion is the most important aspect which is another reason why i'm optimistic for dawn Trail in the future because again they're talking about the right things we need to see what these changes are and i'm not expecting everything to just get fixed and changed the moment that say 7.2 comes around because duh the way they worded it was 7.2 and beyond this is going to be a long-term thing and they're probably going to experiment or add things here and there in culmination to 8.0 that's probably what they're going to do i agree with mr happy on this issue it's not just a matter of 7.2 comes around and all the jobs play completely differently and are more complex and we all live in happy-go-lucky land that's probably not what's about to happen here right but what i want to see is coolness. I want to see flair. I want to see an interesting angle to when I play all of these jobs. When I'm playing Monk, I want to feel like a Monk. I don't mind them getting rid of the damage over time from Demolish, because I'm playing a class all about punching things to death. I don't want to be, I don't want that to be the dot job. Let that be something else. However, when I'm punching things, right, I want to feel like, oh, I'm really laying into them, yeah? And I really love that aspect to Monk. It has a great flow and rhythm to it. It's like a faster Dragoon to me. And I've only recently started playing Monk, and I've been really enjoying the rhythm and flow to it. It's really fun, and it feels kind of different. But there's also elements where I'm like, okay, we need to add a bit more individuality. We need to add a bit more interesting gameplay here. This is particularly true for me when it comes to tanks and healers. For healers, oh my god, I just realized my hotbar is going to be all messed up. You kind of know the one button damage rotation I'm talking about when it comes to healers though, right? We don't need to dwell on it all that much, where most of the fight, even when I heal occasionally, very rarely, most of the time, you're not actively healing, you're just spamming the same one button for your DPS rotation repeatedly. I find that super boring, and I can't imagine healers particularly enjoy it either. It's one of the reasons I actually liked Scholar, because I had like two buttons for this, which was kind of nice. But when it comes to tanks, in a lot of ways, they've been really homogenized. Not completely, don't get me wrong, but if you play tanks to any degree over the last couple of expansions, you know what I'm talking about, where if a tank has a certain thing, most of the tanks have some variant of that. There's a little bit of flavor here and there, but ordinarily speaking, the playstyle is extremely simple. We have Blood Weapon, we have 
things like inner release windows being applied to pretty much every other tank as well. Then adding a bit of visual identity and flair to it in Dawn Trail by mixing up the animations and making them different abilities that you just cycle through. Same button input, same rotation, just looks different. That's cool. I like that. It's a step towards them adding more identity and flair to the jobs down the line, in my opinion. That makes the most sense to me. And when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV, I'm not pessimistic. Because I really, at the end of the day, I'm not saying that even right now job design is horrendous or really bad. I haven't played all that much of Endwalker, but what I've played so far, there's jobs that aren't for me, like Summoner, which I think is way too simple. But there's also other jobs like Reaper that I really enjoy, or Dragoon. Do I have my issues with it? Yes! But do I still really enjoy it? Absolutely! And I've recently fallen in love with Monk as well. There's aspects to these jobs that I really enjoy, and I think for the longest time they struggled with the question, what do we want to do with the job design? Because this is easily one of the most polarized debates when it comes to any MMORPG out there. Because there's trenches that are dug, wars that are fought, and everyone caught in the middle is just caught in the middle getting fired at by both sides. People will want a really simple job, some people will want, will want a really complex job. The problem is, if you perfectly balance the two, then, either the easier job does the same numbers as the harder job, so everyone's just incentivized to play the easier job because duh, or you make the harder job do more numbers, in which case the whole high end, who are good enough at the game to just be able to overcome those additional mechanics, will just play those jobs. There's no real easy answer when it comes to this issue, and it's an understandable debate, and I understand why they want to take their time when it comes to this. I really do, because again, one of the easiest ways to get people to leave an MMORPG and put it down is by messing up their job design. And by changing it to a degree where it's no longer fun for them. Or you take away what they really cared about it. People get attached to the littlest things. We all do. You want to know what my, one of my favorite abilities in all of Final Fantasy XIV is? I'll show you. You want to know why I love Dragonfire Dive? Because it looks awesome. That simple. You, you jump up into the air, and you come down in a ball of fire and explode on the enemy. Is it mechanically complex? No. Is it really cool? Yeah. It's all it has to be as well. I love Dragon Fire Dive. I love Grease Lightning on Monk. It's now just kind of like a trait, which is okay. But the idea that the Monk GCD is way quicker than the other jobs is super fun to me as someone who likes faster job design. One of the reasons I'm really looking forward to Viper and that I love Reaper and that I'm really loving Monk. I love rapidity. I love it when I'm hitting my buttons a lot. Yeah? Give me Copple Tunnel. I want that speed. It's one of the reasons I love Dragoon as well. It's really busy. I enjoy that playstyle. It's one of the reasons I didn't. I really liked Dark Knight back in Stormblood as well with Dark Arts. It kept me busy. One of the reasons I liked Samurai back in Stormblood. Kaiten kept me busy. I like that flow. I like. I like it when these jobs have identity. When I hit on one of these buttons and I feel completely different. Tenshi Jin, like the ninjutsu's on Ninja. Great bit of flair. Dragoon with all the jumps and really cool abilities in the flow. I love that. Reaper within Shroud. Dark Knight, when it comes to Living Shadow, looks cool. Mechanically, really simple. And and they, in my opinion, default to just having these big, cool moments. Default to just pure raw damage that's passive in the background. Way too often, in my opinion. Living Shadow could have been really cool, but they make it just do a bunch of random attacks. Why not allow it to pair up with what I'm doing? Would it change much? Not particularly. But it would look really cool, and I would feel as if I'm having some kind of impact on the living shadow. I like that. Why not let me spam Abyssal Drain? Just don't let it do a too much damage, but spamming this in a dungeon in a giant pole? Really cool, and it feels satisfying to have. If I want that gameplay loop nowadays, I have to go over to the warrior. That's what I'm talking about. When, I'm su when I go to the machinist and I summon a giant mech, it's basically just a bunch of damage in the background. Make it have some kind of impact on the buttons that I'm pressing. That, to me, leads to more fun job design when the buttons that I'm pressing have a mechanical feedback that I feel and can respond to. You can't do this perfectly when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV based around the game that it is, and you have to operate within those confines. Because there's no problem with the identity of Final Fantasy XIV, and that's something not to be ashamed of. It's something to be embraced. Not everything will require 
20 different spreadsheets to identify the optimal rotation about and like where or when I want to put in gear skull goals, right? We don't need this. But we don't want everything to devolve to feeling the same and playing the same and then those moments that should be really cool feel lessened because you are afraid to do something really interesting and unique. That's my thing. And Shroud is really cool. It's really simple. But it makes you feel good for when you press it. And that, to me, is one of the most important aspects of job design in a video game. So yeah, that has been my issue when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV job iteration over the longest time. I don't need jobs to be really complex or deep in that regard for the sake of being complex and deep. But I think they should be fun. They should be mechanically satisfying and you should feel that through the buttons you push. That, to me, from the sounds of it, is the lesson that they have learned and have come to agree that Final Fantasy XIV needs more of. It seems like they took this lesson to heart. We'll have to see it to believe it, absolutely. And it is a bit of a shame that we'll have to wait until 7.2 to see these changes begin to roll out. But I don't think we'll see all of them right when 7.2 comes out. At the same time, it took them a while to come around to this, but... I'm kind of glad they're not just trying to shoehorn in a bunch of changes for 7.0 after coming up with the decision probably like within the last month or so. Give themselves time to properly think about these things because these are really big and important changes and arguably some of the most important changes that they're probably going to be end up making when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV on a whole, especially when it comes to Dawn Trail. You have to get these things right. So with that, I'll call the video day after day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really channel out and help support future content and i greatly appreciate it stay safe have a great day leave a comment down below with your favorite job in final fantasy 14 and your best example of an ability or a play style that has been called or pruned from final fantasy 14 over the years that you would like to see return or just really disappointed was let go all those years ago or recently i'd love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions stay safe have a great day make sure to leave a like and subscribe really love the channel out help support future content and i greatly appreciate it thank you all for tuning in bye bye everybody Till we meet again. Ah. Uh.